Can, can I say that out loud? Can I say that out loud? Yes. yes. But last night I had to change my message up a little bit because somebody, I'm not mentioning no name. <laughs> Jennifer, where you at? I see you over there. She was on fire last night on Facebook with the comedy jokes. All that was in. I said, I said, Mitchy, look at this. She is crazy out here tonight. <laughs> you made me laughing so hard. I was laughing so hard between you and my brother. I don't know. Anyway, listen. We know what's going on. Yeah. Yes. Anybody that does not see what's going on has just got their head in the sand. We are in a spiritual warfare. Yes. We are in a spiritual battle with the devil. Mm -hmm. Understand one thing. None of this is taken God by surprise. Right. None of it. Right. And years ago, God gave me a message about grace here. And I sat on that message. And I sat on that message. And today I'm going to preach that message. Because I believe this is the time for that message. You know, God prepares us and equips us. And if we don't uh, pay attention to what he's trying to tell us to do, we'll never receive what he has for us. Yeah. Can I tell you today, today we're going to have a breakthrough. Because yes. see, yes. today we're going to tell the devil we're not afraid of him. Yeah. It's not, and we don't respect him. We understand what he can do, but we know what he cannot do. That's right. I'll say that again. We know what he can do, yes. but as Christians we know what he can cannot do to us. That's right. Amen? And so when he tries to fear us and scare us, and he is, there's a lot of, on the way over, we were driving over here, and I saw several churches that were not open. In my, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, ye little faith. Because if we don't stand up now, the people that don't know Christ, and they see us Christians saying we believe in God, God's a healer. Oh, brother, just give it to God. He's going to get you. Oh, sister, just lay it at the foot of the cross. God's going to heal you. But then we see times like this, and we buckle too. And they say, where's their God? That's right. Where, where, where's their God that they call upon to That's heal right. them all the Come time? On. You can't get them through this? I'm here to tell you something right now. God is here. Yes. Yes. My God is going to heal us. Yes. My God is going to deliver us from this pandemic or craziness, whatever you want to call it out there, yes. wily schemes of the devil. Because we serve a God that is that big. Yes. Amen. But understand one other thing. As Pastor Lynn said earlier, God gives us wisdom. So we have to take our steps too to fight this battle. Yeah, yeah we're going to fight it on our knees. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. We're going to fight it at the cross. Amen. We're not going to get behind the cross and hide. We're going to get in front of the cross That's and right. kneel. Oh. We're going to come. We're going to go in the military. They provide us with all the tools we need to go to battle. Can I tell you, God's word provides us with even greater means yes. Yes. to go to battle. Yes. But we Amen. also still have to <coughs> be wise about our decision making. You know, you're not going to go in, you know, you're not going to be a Daniel and jump in the lion's cage at the zoo and say, okay, God, I'm in here. I'm a Christian. That's, Believe that's me. Wrong. You're going to defend me because these yeah. lions are about to rip you apart and you just gave a good meal, hopefully. Yeah. If you're a big guy like me, you gave a real good meal. <laughs> They're eating for days. And your brother, not to make light on that, but if he wants that 60 pounds he lost, I'd gladly give it back to him. <laughs> no, he gives it. A male's got to a male's got to give it back to him. So you're out. Amen. So, but we will be lifting him because we, my wife and I, my mother-in-law has Alzheimer's. And let me tell you something. That's one of the rudest, crudest diseases in the world. I think because my mother-in-law's body is great. Physically, she's strong. But she's still funny. <coughs> she still makes me laugh. She's beautiful. So today we're going to talk about a breakthrough. Who wants a breakthrough in their life? Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to put this coronavirus thing away? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So today what I'm going to do is the, the message, the title of this message. And like last time I came, I came with a note, and God told me to put them. As a matter of fact, they're still sitting in my Bible. I'm going to give you prayers that outwit the enemy. We're going to talk about prayers throughout the Bible that's going to outwit the enemy. Now last night as I was studying and I was watching Facebook on somebody, I said, man, did you get my notes? 
because I know I haven't seen him since the last time I was here. I mean, I talk to him in text messages and Facebook from time to time, uh, as I do a couple other people in there. But it was just kind of wild. And that, that was confirmation that that's what I was supposed to preach on today. Amen? Amen. That's affirmation. So if you go with me to the book of Ephesians, and if you go with me to chapter 1, and we're going to start out with verse 21. And before we get started, can we pray for our law enforcement? Yes. yes. I have a, a nephew who's a state trooper in New York, and he's watching right now from his bed at home, and I'm going to tell you why, in New York. I have a nephew who's a city police officer in New York, and I have a nephew who's a sheriff's deputy in Houston. The night before last, my nephew, who's a state trooper, John, had, they were at a DUI checkpoint, and they pulled the guy over in a Hummer. And when he went to open the door on the guy, the guy took off. My nephew's hand was holding the door handle. And he drug my nephew down the road. Hmm. And threw his body around like a rag doll. And those were his words. And my nephew John's no small guy. He's a big, stout, strong as a bull joker. So it hit kind of close to home, because we see this all the time on the news. This trooper getting killed, this police. But when it happened to my nephew, I lost my mind. Because I'm very close to my nephews and nieces, especially John and his brother Danny and Caleb and my, my brother, my little nephew Ramon. I'm very close to these guys, like tight, tight. I look at them more as my kids than my nephews. So if we can just go to the Lord right now and just ask for protection, because last night, as my wife and I were shopping, a police officer told us that's a Super 1 in Karen Grove. I said, listen, thanks for what you do out there. Be safe. He says, yeah, it's just ready to get rolling with all this craziness, with the quarantines and the people getting at home. All the kids are going to be leaving the houses, going to get into trouble at night. You're seeing stores starting to close down early. They're starting to adjust their hours. That's because the law enforcement is asking them to, to try to keep the violence down. So, Father God, right now, we come in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, you said that if we ask it in your son's name, it will be done. So, Father, we're asking for total protection over all our law enforcement, no matter where they are. No matter whether they're a state police, a, a, a CIA, an FBI, a local police, or a township police, a sheriff's deputy, security in the hospital, security in the stores, in the malls. Father, we just ask for a protection of, hand, of your hand over their lives right now. And Father, for the families that are sending our law enforcement officers out there, we ask for protection over their families, Father God, and, and comfort and peace over each and every one of them. And Father, I personally thank you right now in the name of your son for saving my nephew. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for that. You're a good, good father. And we praise you in Jesus' name. In 1 Corinthians, I'm Christian, my, my bad. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21 says, Far above all principality and power, and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that in which is to come, and had put together, put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. It's not the church. This building is where we worship God as corporate. But each and every one of us is a church if we're a believer. Yes. So when we walk out these doors, and you go to a restaurant, or you go home, and you go to work, you are representing Christ Jesus in the flesh. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it says, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth it all. And then, verse, and then chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, and it says, and ye... In you he had quickened were dead in trespasses and sins. And that word quickened means to made alive. Okay, so it says you that he made alive because you were dead in your sins. But because he forgave you and you accepted him, he made you alive again. And where in the past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And in that word, he says, ye walk, it means you're alive. So we see right there that he tells us two times in less than ten words 
we were made alive through his son. He tells us right there that far above all principality and power and might and dominion, that he's got it all, that he's got it in control. He tells us that it's under his feet. Coronavirus is under defeat. Amen. 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 We've already Amen. defeated this. Can I tell you something? <coughs> yes, <laughs> I can see him pulling me away from this because I'm trying not trying to stay. Victory is ours. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Victory is already ours. Yeah. See, the devil got the memo, but he does what a lot of us do when we get the tax notices. <laughs> And he puts them in the back pocket. Well, I do them anyway. <laughs> Hope Uncle Sammy listens. Oh, my wife takes care of this. So. <laughs> Good God. But you see, the victory is already ours. We've already defeated this virus. We've already defeated any diseases. Your brother's already defeated. Yeah. The only thing is, is sometimes we will not see that victory on this side of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we will. Sometimes God will allow us to see our victory. Sometimes he says, I'm going to continue to use you to see if you'll honor me. You see, right now, I see a lot of Christians out here panicking. And I say to them, oh, ye of little faith. It's okay to be concerned. It's okay to use good judgment. Yeah. It's okay to have wisdom. But to be afraid of this as a Christian is not of God. And now I know that when Mike is, Brother Mike has uh, got this live on Facebook, and I can guarantee you I will have messages after messages condemning me and blowing me up for what I just said because they're going to say I judge them. But I'm not judging anybody. Right. I'm just saying the word of God says he is not a fair. That's right. And if we are of him, then we cannot be a fair. And I'm going to prove that through some more scriptures I'm about to read here momentarily. See, Ephesians 1.21 in a nutshell says the armies of God are being called forth to enforce the rightful rule of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, in the highest spiritual level. This is the time we should be on our knees. This is the time we should be praying. This is the time we should be sharing and loving with others that don't have some. I was at Sam's the other day in Lafayette. And it was a madhouse. Matter of fact, I wasn't in Sam's. I was in the parking lot. <laughs> I was going to go. He were going. And I watched these two ladies fighting over a car. One lady grabs the car and pulls it closer, and the other lady comes over because she's going something in her purse not paying attention. And the other lady grabs the car and goes, she goes, no, that's my car. And they started going back and forth. Literally, this lady shows me, now these women are about my age. Oh, my God. So she shoves her. She goes back. She shoves her. This will start swinging. While they're going at this, somebody else takes the car and goes on. <laughs> and I, I couldn't get my phone up quick enough to get that video. You see, because when we act like that, the devil wins and we lose anyway. So why should we act like that? Yes, be concerned. Be prayerful. President Trump has called for a national day of prayer again. And he's saying, everybody, to get together and pray. Because that's the only way we're going to defeat this. Amen. Yeah. Well, and Pastor Lindy alluded to that just a moment ago. She said, well, two or more are, in your, are praying. There you are in the midst of us. That's right. Yeah. Can I tell you something? I felt the spirit in this place this morning. Amen. 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 Yeah. And Amen. I was meditating, closed my eyes as we were worshiping. Lord, you are all in all. Yes. I could see the glory of God. I couldn't see his face, but I could see the glory. I could feel his presence yes, in yes, this yes, building. Yes, and I could feel him saying, listen, if you'll depend on me, I'll promise you I'll protect you. That's right. If yes. you call upon me, I promise you well, I'll answer. Yes. And see you saying that. And none of those, I didn't know what you were singing today. I didn't know. You did a good job. I didn't know what you were singing, though. But it's God. So there's three things that are at least very important to the head of Jesus is telling the body about spiritual warfare. First thing we need to do is we need to stand yeah. against the schemes of the wily devil. Yeah. Yes. We need to. In Ephesians 6.13 it says this. And we're going to be in Ephesians for a little while. And then we're going to go to a couple other scriptures, other chapters, other books. 
Ephesians 6, 13 says this. Where therefore, I mean, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and all having done, and having done all to stand. Amen. He's telling us, listen, if we want to withstand this battle that we're in right now against the devil, because he's throwing everything at us. He knows the time is near. Mm -hmm. I believe it in all my heart that Jesus' return will be in my lifetime. Amen. I do too. And so the devil's getting nervous because the church ain't backing down. Ain't right. And we're standing up for Christ. And the saints are coming out in abundance now. Yeah. And we have a president in the United States of America that's leading on the word of God. Right. Amen. Whether people want to believe that or not, I, I want to believe that. I believe that in my heart. I don't believe he was always doing that. But I believe since he got in office, God has touched his life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's the only way he could withstand everything that went at him. That's my personal belief. So I believe that he tells us that we have to stand against the schemes. The only way you're going to stand against the schemes of the devil is through the word of God. Right? Yeah. You will not do it on your own. A doctor can't help you do it. A psychiatrist can't help you do it. All the medication in the world can't help you do it. Alcohol can't help you do it. None of that's going to help you. Amen. But God will. Amen. He equips us. Amen. And in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, it instructs us on how to prepare ourselves for battle. It instructs us on what we need to do and how we need to do it. Do you ever notice when you read the, the, the armor of God, he never puts anything on our backside because he doesn't expect us to retreat. That's right. And if we're of Christian people and we're of godly people and we're of people who say we believe what God is telling us to do is true and if we believe that God's really going to bring us through this, then there's no reason for us to retreat. Right. You have to go head on into the devil and you have to fight him in his own battle with your ways. And the only way you're going to win is through Jesus Christ. Because he's otherwise you're not going to do it. Philippians 4 13 says, I will give, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. You see, I can defeat the devil through Christ Jesus. I can't defeat the devil by myself. But with Christ I can. And so the way we're going to do it is through him. So this is it's not easy to do all the time, but it's it's important that we do it. Yeah. And Ephesians 2, chapter, ver, uh, chapter 2, verse 2 says this. And I read it just a second ago. It says that where in the past time you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the children of disobedience. And it goes on to say this, it says, Among you, among whom also we had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and that we were by nature the children of the wrath, even as others. And then verse 4 says this, and, I, and it says, But God. Right. That's right. But God. Amen. You see, it says at one time we fell for all this garbage because we were of the world. If you look at a lot of the people that are falling for the stuff of the world right now, falling for the dirty schemes that whoever's playing them is, which we know it all comes from the altar of the devil. <coughs> if we look at all that, we see that most of these people say they know Christ, but they don't live their life as they know Christ. Mm -hmm. If you want God to do what you're asking him to do, then you have to live your life like his son lived his life. And now none of us will ever be Jesus Christ. Although there's people out there who actually think they can be. Yeah. <laughs> but we can walk every day. And, God, and, and, and God's word says that we, we should strive every day to be more like Christ. He knows that none of us going to be perfect, brother. That's why his word says that all men will fall short of the glory of God. He knows that we're going to fall. He knows that we're going to have time of doubt. He knows that the devil's going to instill fear. And when that fear comes in you, the first thing you need to do is pull out the sword of armor. Yeah. Yeah. You need to do that. And that's the Bible. Yes. You know, 
I see people all the time now, so many more people, it reminds me of 9-11. Everybody remember 9-11? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That was a world, that was a, 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 a travesty, one of the worst days yes. in the history of the United States of America. Only second to Pearl Harbor mm -hmm. as far as death totals on our soil. And you remember how the whole United States of America all got together. All the Congress and Senators, they stand up on Capitol Hill on the steps and sing Kumbaya. Yeah. You remember this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They all came together to help one another, sister. Yeah. There were people coming from all walks of life, Catholics and, and, and Baptists and Protestants and, and Pentecostals. There was no denominations. Right. There was no color of skin. Right. There was no obese and skinny people. It was everybody helping everybody yes. and praying with people. And the churches were full. Yes. The churches were full because everybody feared. They were afraid. <laughs> and now we see that we have an epidemic on our hands, which in my eyes is being blown out of the water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Way out of the poison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we need to take it serious. Amen. But why are the churches closest? Why, where are the Christians? Where are the people that are supposed to be standing up for God? This is a spiritual warfare battle. We want God to take care of us, but yet we're not willing to go to him. Mm -hmm. And I understand that some people are sick. And I understand that the elderly, if they're sick, they should stay home because that's the one that affects the most. But I haven't heard it affecting any younger generation. <clears throat> so where's our younger generation? You see, the other day, I was sharing this with Pastor Lynn on the phone the other day um, when I spoke to her. And I was speaking to another brother of mine. And I said, you know, God gave me a revelation. We wanted socialism. You know, you got all this younger generation wanting socialism. Want this person in office and that person in office. And God said, I'm going to show you a little bit about what it's about. Because see now, watch the chaos in the next couple of weeks. Because all these people are being told what they can do and where they can't go. What, what time they can do this, restaurants are gonna start closing down. The only thing that aren't closing are bars. And that's Satan. And that's Satan's domain. You see, but anything else is being shut down. And what's in bars? Alcohol. And what happens when you get alcohol in your body? You become stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Okay? You become inherent. You don't know what's going on. I can tell you that because I know I used to be one of those. That's what it says right there in that scripture I just read. It said that I used to be like that. But now we're not like that anymore. Now we're brothers and sisters of the same race. Amen. God's. Amen. We're children of the King of Kings, the Lord of all the King of Most High. And when we gave Jesus Christ our life and we said, Lord, accept, accept us into your kingdom, we accept you into our heart. We will live our lives according to you. We will sin no more, which we lie, because we do. But his grace and mercy is so fulfilling that he forgives us because he knows our heart. But you see what happened here? Is when we did that, he says, I will live in you and you will live in me. We will become one. In the sense of that, whatever was his was ours. In other words, he says, you will do greater things than I did. So why are we worried? Amen. Because we're in a spiritual battle. And that's what the devil does <clears throat> most. You know what the number one tool of the devil is? Fear. Mm -hmm. Fear. If he can make you afraid, he can stop you from doing things. I see, I got, a, I got a lot of friends of mine that are pastors that said, listen, we're holding church. Pastor Lynn, we're holding church. Amen. Come if you can. Hallelujah. If you can't, we'll get you a CD, she said. Amen. And that's what a lot of these preachers, pastors are doing. Yeah. Brother Michael's Facebook Live and this. So of the elderly, the ones that are afraid to go to church for this, they have no reason not to hear the word of God. They can right. watch it on Facebook. Right. You can go anywhere and watch it. But I want, I want to caution you. Be careful who you watch. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you got people out there that are not giving the truth. Yeah. And we want to give you the truth. Amen? Amen. So Paul calls him the power, the prince of the power of air. I try not to give the devil any tools. I try not to give the devil any uh, triple eyes. I, I don't want him, I don't want him thinking he's somebody he isn't, because I know what he is. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's disgusting. 
That's right. He, he, he destroys. He comes to seek sour and devour. But when I hear people call him a wimp, toothless, can I tell you what that does? That embroils <coughs> him, that him, that gives him strength. Because it's like going to somebody and challenging them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You take a big, strong man in the gym, that ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> and I go over there and I curl 120 pounds, <clears throat> straining. And then you got this big guy over here that's curling 300 and he's just talking as he's doing it, like it's nothing. And then I'm going to challenge him to a fight. Chances are I'm going to lose. Okay? <laughs> well, what did I just do? I embodied him. I, I, I gave him energy. Now he wants to because I challenged him. Anytime it's natural human habit, if you challenge somebody, they take offense to it. And it gives them strength, inner strength. So what we need to do is with the devils, we need to say, we know who you are. Mm -hmm. You don't scare me. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of you because in the name of Jesus, I defeated you. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that if you speak it in the name of Jesus, he has to leave. Yes. You see, here's the kick behind that. I hear people say it all the time, and I believe that in my heart because I know when I talk to the devil and I tell him to leave me alone sometimes, he does not right away. So I have to do it multiple times. But why does he leave me alone? Because I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in that name above all names. I believe when I speak the name of Jesus, I live my life according to what God tells me to do to the best of my ability, that I know that Jesus answers my answer. God answers my prayers because I mentioned his son's name. And he says that if you ask, Jesus tells us, he told his son, if you ask in my name, my father will do it. Amen. He will do it. Not that he could. So the, the point is this. If we want to defeat not just the coronavirus, but that's the thing going on right now. But the flu, Alzheimer's, diabetes, cardiac, poverty, financial burdens, any stronghold bondage has got over your life, drug addictions, alcohol addictions, pornography addictions, anything that takes the place of Christ. The only way you're going to do it is through Christ. That's right. <laughs> That's the only way. And if you don't do it through Christ, it ain't going to be done. Yeah. And the devil might give you a season of your life to where you think everything's going glorified. Oh, God, man, I'm doing something good because God's really blessed me. If you ain't honoring God, you ain't in church. If you ain't honoring God and you ain't studying your word. If you ain't honoring God and you ain't loving our people. If you're going to a bar every night, or you're going to the casino every night, or you're doing all this other stuff that I just said, and, you, and, you, and things are going good for you, don't think it's from God, please, because it's not. The devil has that kind of power to give you that, too. But you see, the real victory is in Christ Jesus. The real victory is when you lay your head on the pillow at night and you know you did a good day for God. That's when you know you got victory. Listen to me. We're not spectators. God didn't call us to be spectators. God called us to be fighters for the word of God. He called us to be demon slaves. He called us to be chain breakers. He called us to be bondage breakers. He called us to set the captives free. That's what he called us to do. He didn't say sit on your butt and do nothing. You know... These parents out here, that do, and, 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 and I know kids can be a hassle. But parents, for the next few weeks, your kids are going to be home with you. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what a great opportunity that is to minister? Do you know what a great opportunity that is to pick up the Word of God every day and do a Bible study at home? You know, people say, well, I go to church. That's the pastor's job. Negative. It's not Pastor Lynn's job to have Bible studies in your house. That's Amen. your job. Amen. It's not Pastor Lynn's job to lead your kids to the Lord. That's your job. Yeah. And what you do at home will take when they go out. It's Pastor Lynn's job to feed you the word of God from the pulpit. It's Pastor Lynn's job to encourage you, to give you corporate worship, to be the shepherd over a flock of sheep. And can I tell you something? Sheep are the dumbest animals in the world. Yeah. 
because they'll follow anybody anywhere. And then they don't know how to get back. Right. You take a sheep and walk them down that cool door and put them in that room, close it for two seconds, and come back out. He will not know how to come back down this hall unless you show him. See, Pastor Lynn's job and other pastors' jobs are to lead their sheep. The sheep's job is to be attentive because what does the Bible say? My sheep will know my voice. Yes. Thank you. Lord. And I will know theirs. <clears throat> and you see, what voice will your children know? Mm -hmm. What voice do you know? Do you know when God's speaking to you versus the scheme of the devil? Because right now, I'm going to tell you, with this coronavirus, I hear God speaking to me and say, just be okay. Yep. It's going to be okay. That's right. Don't panic. It's going to be okay. It's just another season. You went through it through your full life. You went through it through mad cow. H1N1. H1N1. Mm -hmm. I forgot all about that one. Do you remember when the AIDS became out, when AIDS came out in the late 80s? Oh, my gosh. You remember the 2000 thing? At the stroke of midnight, 2000, it's all over with. <laughs> Nobody's going to be around. We're all going to die. You better get it right. Here we are, 2020. And kick it still. You see, because God says it's going to be okay. Fear not. Trust in me. Trust and obey. Follow the rules. Look at the Ten Commandments. You see, if you put fear... Then you're, then you're missing number one all, all together. Because it says, Thou shalt be no other God before me. There's a reason why he made that first. Because he wanted it to be a point. Nothing goes in front of God. Not my wife, not my grandchildren, not the coronavirus, not any sicknesses, not high blood pressure, <coughs> nothing. So when we start getting fearful and get afraid, then we put that in front of God. And then we, we're demising God, saying, God, I don't think that you can handle this one. And you're, you're going, you're going, you're, you're going down a very rough road that I don't want to go with you on. Sorry. So we are not to be spectators. We are to be out there doing what God called us to do. We are to be praying, loving. We are the ones who God has designed to stand and designated for us to go against the devil. When God created you, sister. He created you uniquely for you. Uniquely for you. Uniquely for you. When he created you, brother, he created you uniquely for you. And for him to use you how he <coughs> sees fit. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God's not going to hurt you. God's not going to allow you to get destroyed. He might allow you to go through some stuff. He did Job. What did he tell the devil? Have you tried my faithful servant Job? But you can't kill him. And through the whole thing, Job found out who his friends were and who weren't. He found out he had no friends. He found out even his wife was saying, just curse him and die. And Job said, nope, ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. Why? Because Job knew the power of the Almighty God. And because he stayed faithful to the power of the Almighty God, when God said enough is enough, we know the story. Job got twice what he had to begin with. Sure did. I'm telling you today, stay faithful to God's word. Yes. Stay faithful to what God is doing in our lives right now. I walked in a pastor and said, Tony, I'm not sure a lot of people will be here Sunday because, you know, people might. And I told my wife, you should sit right there. I'll turn my back and she'll tell you. I said, that church will have everybody there to watch. Because this is a church of believers. Yes. And I don't just say that lightly. I say that because I believe it in my heart. Yeah. I see the worship. Yes. Okay? When somebody else can just step up and do worship and have a powerful worship like we did again this morning. Yes. That's because of the leadership in the church is right. Yes. She's following the law of God. Yes. And she's seeking the will of God. Yes. And you heard her what she said about the board. So she's got a solid board who is seeking the wisdom of God. Okay? That's why I knew this church would be full again today. Because I knew without a shadow of a doubt. This is a believing church. Yeah. I, I, I tell you right now, the coronavirus will not touch this church. Amen. Because there's too much power in this church. There's too much faith. There's too much believing in this church. And let me tell you something. 
God's no respecter of a person. What he'll do for Faith Harbor Assembly in Port Arthur, Texas, he'll do for any other church that will stand on that solid ground. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So he designed us to this. He tell, he, the head tells the body to do it. Who's the head? Who's the head? God. And so when the head tells us to do it, he's telling us to do it for him. And I don't know about you, but I want to do things for him because he has done way more than enough for me already. If, I, if he never does anything else for me in my whole entire life, I, he's done more than I ever deserve. That's but he I says, I want you to go. And I want you to go to battle. Yeah. Can I tell you something? You military guys in here, you know what I'm talking about? <coughs> If your commanding officer tells you to go and you say no, you're going to the brig. <laughs> See, be grateful that we serve a God that says, okay, right now they're a little apprehensive, they're a little concerned, they're a little scared. Let me show up my glory. Let me have mercy on their soul. And I believe that's what he's doing right now. And I believe in the next week or so, I believe after today, if everybody will heed to the request that was made by the president to pray yeah, and yeah. pray hard. Yeah. And pray to God the Father. Don't be praying to Allah. Don't be praying to Buddha or Muhammad or any one of those other characters because they're all in the ground. Yes. Pray to the God the Father. Yes. Yes. And pray at the end in the name of Jesus. Yes. 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 Let him know we glorify his son. That's right. And I promise you, if we do that, the coronavirus is gone. Now, granted, there's going to be something else come down the line, but we have to go through the same trend, just like we did all the time. And you see, I said this to, uh, forget where I was this past week, I was preaching, and I said, it's in the valley is where God does his greatest work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in the valley is where God does his greatest work. Why? Because that's where most people reach out to God. God, help me, please. If you, you'll take me from this God, I promise I'll never drink again. Liar. <laughs> I'll never sin again, God. Liar. Yeah. See, I, I made it a point not to tell God I won't do anything. Because <laughs> he always makes me do it. He <laughs> said, I told God, I said, uh, I'll never move to Florida, God. I know I'm being deployed down there and I'm going to go over to Afghanistan from, from Florida, but I, I'm never going to live in Florida. Well, I come back and I live in Florida. Then I met my wife. And I came here in September with a thousand and one degree out. And I said, God, I am not moving to Louisiana. That's not happening. <laughs> I live in Louisiana. <laughs> I tell God every day, God, I'm not going to be a billionaire. You can't make me. <laughs> And they will repent of their sins. And they will turn back to me. I will heal their land and I will heal them. He doesn't say that I might. I'll think about it. Maybe I will. Maybe. He says I will. You see, he's asking us to turn back to him. So in the valley is where God does his work. When we get to the mountaintop, we forget about who took us to that mountaintop. Mm -hmm. And we think we did it. And we're not the ones who did it. No. It's him. Amen. But as long as we're in a battle... We have to depend on God. Yes. Yes. And that's what I believe in my heart, that sometimes we go through these seasons in our life when we turn away from God and we turn to the world and we turn to thinking we did this and we've done that. And let me tell you, something, ain't none of us that good. No. No. But he is. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it's times like this is when God says the body of Christ will come together. Yeah. The body of Christ will unify. And we will be victorious over all things. Amen. Because that's who God is. Yes. And the sooner we realize that, the sooner we start doing what God called us to do, 
the better things will be for us. You know, that's why I believe that solid Christians in the Word of God, solid people, and, and like, I, I watch Facebook a lot. I watch Mike. I watch Pastor Lynn. I watch, I always think it's Jennifer. You better watch I'm finding out it's Chaz. Yeah. You see? I watch these guys. And I watch a lot of other pastor friends of mine and evangelists, Rod Vincent, Terry Green, Ken Malone, Gene Summers. Oh, gosh. <laughs> We're cracking and making fun of this virus. Why? Because we know where it ends. Yeah. We know the end result. Victory in the name yeah. of Jesus. Amen. So make fun of the devil in that sense. And say, you know, what you got? You can't hurt me. Because my God will protect me. Yes. You know, but we need to do this, though. What I saw in Costco's, what I saw in the parking lot of Sam's, is people that are healthy are buying up all this stuff, Amen. and the ones that are needing it can't get their hands on it. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be like that, then at least give it to the people that need it. Amen. If you're going to go out and buy it all up, yeah, put some aside for you. I respect that. But give to the ones that are less fortunate. Because there are some people out there that cannot afford it. That just do not have the way, shape, or means to be able to get out there and get it. That's right. Bless them people. Because when you bless somebody in an epidemic or a time of tragedy or a time of need like this, God's blessings are going to be so much on you, you're not going to be able to contain it. You see, that's the love of God. And believe it or not, that is the key word to spiritual warfare. My, my ministry used to do spiritual warfare. That's what I was done. You go to my, book, my, my, my Bible on my uh, truck, and you'll see just one of about 12 binders of spiritual warfare stuff that I've researched and studied on and stuff. Like I said, this message was packed in the very far back. And love is the key weapon to spiritual warfare. Yes. Because when you can truly love somebody, you won't hurt them. When you truly love something, you don't destroy it. You see, we need to step out and, and step up big. Engage in spiritual practices. Engage in a pro pre proactive spiritual warfare. In Revelation 2 7, it says this. I forget what book the, I forget what book the Revelation is, but only to pass the same way. Revelation 2.7 says this, it says, He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. You see, he that overcometh, Jesus tells us that seven times in, in that scripture, seven times, he says, he that overcometh. In order to overcome something, you've got to conquer it. You got to be able to defeat it, and if you want to defeat the devil, you got to do it through Christ, yeah. because he's a worthy adversary. I promise you that. He's very wild. If you think you're going to outsmart him, you're not going to outsmart him. The only way you're going to beat the devil is through God's word. That's the only way. That's the only way. And so he's telling us, listen, if we overcome this. And the only way we're going to overcome this is continuously giving glory to God. Yeah, right. Continuously praying to the Lord Jesus Christ. Continuing honoring Him through our actions. Yeah. Helping other people, loving on other people, doing the right thing, being kind. Then we are overcomers. Yeah. And overcomers will inherit. Yeah. He says it right there. He says, I will give you. He doesn't say, I might. He doesn't say, hey, listen, I'll give you a portion of it. You know. He says, I will give. Yes. To eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Yeah. Can I tell you something? You don't have to wait to get to heaven to get that. Right. You can have some of that right here on earth. Right. Yeah. You can have it right now. Right. But in order to receive that, you've got to do what God's asking us to do. He doesn't ask us so much, folk. He really don't. But what he does ask for is all of us. He doesn't want just a part of us, Mike. 
He doesn't. You know, I, 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 I've been to a couple of uh, seminars in... I don't, I, you know, I go to marriage seminars, I don't go to marriage seminars to, as a participant, but I have spoken at one. And so I always say, what is a good marriage? What constitutes a good marriage? What constitutes a good relationship between a man and a wife? And this is the answer I, I get like 99.9% of the time. It's a 50-50 relationship. No, it ain't. If you only give me 50%, I'm only giving you 50%. That means I got 50% of what side of you. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's 100-100. Right. Right. You give me all of you, I give you all of me. That's what you say when you get married. That's right. He says, let these two join as one. When you got saved, he said, I'll, I'll abide in you and you abide in me. I'll live, I'm not going to tell until your heart is you open. I'll come in and join. And we'll live as one. You see, if you want God to give you his best, you have to give God your best. Amen. If you want God to bless you, then you have to start blessing other people. Right. And you have to bless God. And I heard one guy tell me, you can't bless God. He's too powerful to all be. And, oh, yes, you can. Because when you're doing good things unto others, yeah. and you're honoring him in that way, you're blessing him. Yeah. You see? So we, yes, God bless us, but we can also bless him. And the more we bless him, the greater he loves it. Not that he's going to love us any more than he already does, because he can't. He loves us that much. I mean, he sent his only son. But it's up to us if we want these receiving rewards. We have to understand that we have to do it in the name of Jesus. Because anytime you do it in the name of Jesus, you're putting the devil on notice. Three, declare God's wisdom to the principalities. If you want to go with me back to Ephesians, we're going to go to chapter 3, verse 10, please. And it says, to the intent that now unto the principalities and the powers in heavenly places might be known by the church that the manifold of wisdom, the manifold wisdom of God. He tells us, he's, he's telling us right there that, hey, Paul is telling us that the only power that we're going to get is from heaven. He's telling us, he says this, it says, uh, Paul's disclosure of this mysterious teaching of angels of principality and powers in heavenly places is of God's wisdom. If you're looking for any other wisdom other than God's wisdom, then you're looking in the wrong place. Amen. That's right. And uh, now, understand this. God might not give you the wisdom and the answers you're looking for right away. But if you'll be diligent and wait patiently upon the Lord, all things will be given to you. He says that. He promises us that. And unlike us, I can make a promise to you, sister, and break it. Now, in my heart, I, I feel guilty. But after a day or so, I forgot about it. <laughs> but see, God can't. That's right. God cannot forget a promise he's made to us. Right. And not that he can't. He doesn't want to. He wants to honor us. He wants to love us. He wants to bring us through the valley. He wants us to reach the mountaintop. But along that route, he wants us to see his glory. He wants us to see where he's coming from. He wants us to see the things he has already done for us. Yes. And then sometimes he'll give you a small glimpse of the things that are coming. But I'm going to tell you something right now. If God showed you everything he had for you, you couldn't understand it, and you couldn't deal with it. <coughs> if he came to you today, and he came to me and he said, tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock in the morning, you're going to walk out and you're going to get out of bed, you're going to trip, you're going to hit your head, you're going to bust your head, you're going to knock yourself on couch, you're going to die. <laughs> well, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, I can get out of bed. <laughs> that's just how that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you, I should have told you. You see, you couldn't handle it. You couldn't handle it. That's why he says, wait. Wait patiently upon me. I'm going to give you the desire of your heart. Serve me, though. Serve me. You don't go to work and sit on your can and get paid for it. Well, maybe some of you do. <laughs> but if you work for me, you don't. <laughs> if you work for me and you're sitting in the truck all day and you ain't doing nothing, you ain't getting paid. 
Well, if you're out there doing what I'm asking you to do, whatever it takes to get the job done, then yeah, you're going to get a paycheck. God's the same way. He says, listen, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. But what have you done for me lately? What have you done for God lately? We're all scared of this craziness that's going on right now. And this is just the, this is just the bottom. There's so much more yet to come behind this. I just feel it in the spirit. He's preparing us. Yes. He's preparing us for something bigger and greater. And he's saying, will you serve me? Will you stay focused? Will you allow me to handle it? And you just go about the business that I called you to do. Because if you try to handle it yourself, you're going to mess it up. Sure. He said, this is a, a, a command from the head of the body. The church should make the declaration to the powers in the invisible world, which is God. We should tell God, God, we'll do whatever you tell us to do. We'll walk the road that you want us to walk. We'll walk the path. Yes, it's straight and narrow. And yes, it's going to be hard sometimes. And yes, there's going to be disappointments. And yes, there's going to be sadness. And yes, there's going to be pain. And yes, there might be some setbacks along the way. But you know what? I'm going to get up off my knees. When I fall, I'm going to raise up one knee at a time, because that's how I have to do it nowadays. <laughs> and I'm going to say, God, thank you. Yes. Thank you for allowing me to get on one knee. Yeah. Can you help me up from the yes. second knee, please? <laughs> okay, I'll crawl over to that tree. Yeah. You see? But God's going to help you up. And then you press forward. That's right. Mm -hmm. You press forward. That's right. You know, Peter. I love Peter. All the all the men that were on the boat, there were 11 others on that boat that night. He's the only one who said, Lord, if this, you can <coughs> come to you. He's the only one who had the faith to walk out on that water. That's right. And what happened when he took his eyes off of God? <laughs> he fell in the water. Yeah. Okay, now he, 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 he told God, I'll come to you if you tell me to come. So God tells him to come. He's walking on the water. Woohoo! But the devil starts throwing stuff at him. Yeah. And he gets all nervous and all scared. He took his eyes off of Jesus. He fell in the water. Did Jesus leave him there to drown? No. He said, Lord, help me. Bam. Raises him up, puts him back on drown. You see, he, God, will not allow us to get hurt. We might think we're getting hurt. But in God's eyes, we're standing up for him. That's right. We're standing for his glory. Yes. We're standing for what he's called us to do. Right. We're standing up for the principles of the kingdom of God. Yeah. We're standing up for the glory of his son Jesus yeah. Christ and what yeah. he did for us. Okay. And again, Peter. Oh, I'll go to the grave with you, Jesus. As I, I'll go to the grave with you. He said, before the go box twice, you'll deny me. But he was the only one that drew a sword when Judas betrayed him. Huh? He's the only one that drew a sword and cut the air off the Romans' guard. And Jesus says, stop. It's about love. It's not about retaliation. It's not about hate. Put the air back on the Roman soldier instantly. And at the end, when Mary met him on the road, why do you seek living among the dead? What did he say to her? Well, he told her, why do you, why do you seek living among the dead? And she told him everything. And he said, go tell my disciples. He only mentioned one of the disciples' names, by the way. Who his name was that? Peter. To tell Peter. Why? Because he wanted Peter to know that you denied me. And you fell. And you lied to me. But I told you it was going to happen. And you said no. But I forgive you. And I love you. And we know that when Peter was murdered and crucified, they put him on a cross. But he didn't feel that he was dignified enough to die like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They put him upside down. That's standing on the word of God. That's understanding the glory of God. Where are you today? Where are you today? You know, we, we see so much stuff going on. With all the stuff that's going on in this world, we see a lot of it. But the one thing I do see is I see a lot of Christians falling. Brush it off. Stand up to the other leg. Brush that knee off. Give God the glory. 
ask for his forgiveness, and press forward for the kingdom of God. That's right. Amen. That's right. And let's defeat Satan once and for all. Amen. You know, ten, I'm just going to give you ten steps real quick like that that can protect your home because that's where it all starts at. In two scriptures that I'm not going to read, but I'm going to ask you all to read later. Except Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior if you haven't done that yet. Yeah. Is there anybody in here that has not known Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of their life? I'm looking around and I doubt it very seriously. So I'll go to number two. Take spiritual inventory of your life. Where's your walk with Christ today? Are you trusting God to get you through the midst of the storm? Or are you trusting people? Are you looking for God to give you the glory? Are you looking for God to give him the glory? <clears throat> Are you giving the glory to yourself saying, hey, I was smart about this. I went out and I bought toilet paper. Still don't get that part. <laughs> I went out and bought paper towels. I went out and I bought 40 cases of water. Uh -huh. Even though my neighbor, she's a little elderly woman next door, she ain't got nothing, but she ain't getting none of mine. <laughs> really? Where's your, inventory? Where's your spiritual inventory? Where is your life today? If God was to call you home today and you met Jesus face to face, why would you ask him to let you into heaven? What can you what 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 charge can he bring against you to tell you you can't get into heaven? Where's your spiritual walk? Third, if you haven't done this already, dedicate your home to the Lord. When my wife and I bought our home, I walked, we, we looked at several properties before then. We walked in, and I walked to the middle. We were waiting on the guy to come, and I walked to the middle of the field in the far back. And, and I said, okay, God, this is like the 10th property we finished today. I'm really tired and ready to go home. And I felt the Lord speak to me. This is your home. This is your property. So when the guy came, we met him. We walked through it. We gave him what he asked for. We bought it. And the first thing we did, my wife and I held hands together, and we dedicated our home to the Lord. And we put a cross on the front of the property. When you come in, that's the first thing you're going to see when you get to my house. There's a cross right there. Because we dedicated our home to the Lord. Because we want a peaceful home. Did you dedicate your home to the Lord? Psalms 91, I'm not going there, but you got to prepare yourself for battle. <clears throat> Take spiritual inventory of your home. What do you have in your home? What do you got on TV? What do you listen to on the radio? What do you allow on your computer, your cell phones? Cleanse your ungodly objects from your home. Talks about that in Deuteronomy 7.25. So what, you know, look at what you got in your house. I know those little Buddha stamp, the little Buddha statues with the little fat belly, the little guys. I know they're cute, but they're ungodly. As That's all right. That's right. They're not godly. No. And I know somebody gave it to you 20 years ago, and you know what? Get rid of it. What kind of books do you have in your house? That's right. Well, I got these old Playboys, but they're from back in the 70s, and they're plastic. They've never been opened. I've never looked at them, but they're just, you know, they're, they're worth a lot of money. Really? They hold a lot of demons. That's right. You gotta start a fire pit. They make good fire paper. Burn them. <laughs> you have to get rid of stuff in your house that's not of God. And I'm not telling you to go home and start cleaning your house out and, and you know, if I see lots of fires coming from this area for people from like her, I, I'm denying it. They go off to you. you see, Cleanse each room of your house. <coughs> we had a guy stay at our house one time, and, and, and we were trying to help the young man out, and he was using heroin, and I found needles and everything, so I kicked him out. And the first thing I did was when he was gone, I went in each room. I opened each door in every room, including the kitchen, all the drawers, all the doors, and I prayed over each one. And I started in the back of my house, and I worked my way to the door, yeah. and the door was open. And I was calling off the demons. And I was calling them off because I want a peaceful home. Right. I want a home when people come into my home and my wife's home that we know, that they know, that the Lord is present there. Yeah. That's how you combat the devil. In my land, the same way. Consecrate your home and property. 
Fill your home with glory. Right now, my dog is home listening to Christian music. I don't know if he understands it or not, <laughs> but that's what he's getting. And the only reason why Jimmy Swaggart ain't on TV right now is because we've got a, them new cable boxes came on and they got a timer. So it goes off in two hours, so he can't say or anything. So I said, well, we'll just put Christian music on for you then. <laughs> why Christian music? Why not just any music? Because when you got the Christian music playing, when you got music glorifying God, the devil does not want to come in that room. That's right. right. He does not want to come because he knows he's not welcome. That's why Joshua says, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yeah. Right. You see, we have to be serving God. Yeah. And in this day and time, we need to. And the final one, spiritual victory. Mm -hmm. If you do not have spiritual victory in your, in your lives, I'm going to pray that before you walk out this building today that you will. Because God wants you to. Yeah. Can you come up and play some song for me, please? You know, I feel like the Lord is saying today that the breakthrough is here. That's right. But before you can receive the breakthrough, you've got to adjust some things in your life. And just like communion, the Bible says that if you take communion and you have sin in your life, it's an abomination. It's against God's will. You're not doing it unto him. Now it's just a ritual. Oh, come on, David. I was thirsty. So I'm going to ask everybody just to, 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 just for a couple seconds as she's, as she's playing softly, just spiritual inventory of your life right now. And ask God, what do you need to adjust into your life to show him your strong faith so that he can break anything that's in your life that's not in him off? You see, God wants to break you today. He doesn't want you leaving here the same way you came in. He wants you leaving here fuller. He wants you leaving here richer. He want, and I don't talk about richer in finances. Maybe he does. But I know he wants you to go walk away out of here richer in spirituality. And I'm not talking religion. I'm talking spirituality. I'm talking with God. I'm talking about you being one with God.
music and worship.